Hey everyone, it's been a little bit since we had an athlete on the show, so today I bring you a really good one in Reese Humphrey. Reese was a several-time All-American and national finalist for The Ohio State University. He's also a several-time world teamer along with winning world titles on the veteran level. Now there's a lot of other stories that we discussed, like his new album that just dropped, yes he did just create an album, along with his beach wrestling career. I will let Reese steal the show to talk more about his new initiatives, but first, if you want several full unedited interviews, feel free to go check out my Patreon and subscribe over there along with so many more wrestling interviews on this channel so feel free to subscribe and like this video for more now without further ado reese humphreys ladies and gentlemen first yeah. thing uh you said you got some big things coming up so we can just dive into those whatever you want to talk about first yeah man so one uh my favorite thing is me jay brucky my former athlete at the NJR njrtc just dropped an album uh, it's got a ton of different stuff on it. Country, hip hop, uh, pop, rap. Uh, it's got some comedy in there, but uh, I think it's really good music. Actually, uh, I've done some, some stuff just like very playing around before, but this is, uh, actually pretty serious and we're getting better and better every time we go in. It's almost like wrestling. It feels like a competition. It's nerve wracking. <laughs> it's exciting. Um, it's never as good as you want it to be. So you're always trying to perfect it. CJ is always really on our producer to uh, to make sure everything is as perfect as possible. So I'm pretty excited about that. It definitely has something on there for everybody. And uh, if you don't crack a smile at least one time throughout the album, then uh, then you might be dead inside. So that's that's the first thing that I'm I'm pretty excited about. That dropped like last week. It's uh, it's doing that's pretty awesome. well on Spotify, but What's it but called? I think it needs to. It's called a snow day and it's highlight Humphrey and young Brook. <laughs> I love it. I'm def That is literally the first thing I'm going to do when we're done this call. Yeah, you got to check it out. The whole album is like 20, 25 minutes. So they're all like two or three minutes uh, per song. But I mean, you can run the whole album through. It's pretty, pretty funny. And then it just gets better with each play. So I'm, I'm pretty excited for people to hear that. But um, it's kind of hard to get the word out. So I appreciate you spreading that a little bit. Oh, I got Second you. Second thing. Yeah, right. Second thing uh, is I think could be a game changer for wrestling. We're starting adult wrestling, me and CJ as well. We've been doing a lot of stuff kind of on the side, uh, little side hustles. And uh, what I'm doing right now, starting this weekend, I have maybe six or eight weekends, almost consecutive weekends, um, where we do classes around Jersey and Pennsylvania where it's only adults. So it's 18 and up. And uh, for some reason, wrestling has no very, very little um, clubs or franchises that do this kind of class. Jiu-Jitsu absolutely crushes this, crushes this market. And um, I don't know why wrestling has to stop after high school. And, you know, it's only a very few amount of people that get to wrestle in college. And then even after that, it's it's even less. So, uh, so many people wrestled in high school, but there's no outlet for it. And um, we were going to provide that. And so we already talked to USA Wrestling. I had a call with Rich Fender and he said it can't be about competition. And, you know, I, I caught a little bit of a buzz from this with uh, the veteran worlds, but it can't be about competition. It's only about fitness, self-defense and um you know, just having fun. And so uh, we attach ourselves to jujitsu community. We do it out of the jujitsu gyms. We get half wrestlers, half jujitsu people, uh, men and women, of course. And uh, it's just been a blast to do this. And they said, if we make it work in Jersey, we can make it work uh, nationwide. And I have all my guys, my people, my wrestling network all the way throughout the country. I think we could do it by the end of the year. So uh, we're trying to get the word out in Jersey. And right now we're getting, getting really good feedback. and. Um, I'm excited to get that started this weekend. That's incredible. A video series that has all the techniques that we have to learn by coaches. And we're going to be able to um, have my guys coach all these different locations. So I think we can spread it in Jersey fairly quickly and uh, have a pretty simple and easy curriculum to follow. And I think if you teach the parents and you can teach the coaches, it's going to trickle down into, into uh, the youth. And we're going to actually have some good input from people that are very close to, to our young athletes. So, I mean, I think it can just be such a game changer, like almost immediately. And, and it's, it's so fun. And I mean, I know I'm not one to just get on the treadmill and just grind. So uh, it's such a good outlet. It's like solving a puzzle that you get to do wrestling. And it's just, I think it's amazing. So we're, we're really trying hard at it. 
Um, what what yeah. part of New Jersey is that going to be in, or do you guys have several locations for the classes? So right now we are we're doing this little summer tour, and we're doing it to figure out where our locations are going to be. So it kind of depends on you know where we can get the best amount of people, the most people with the most space, and um, and I think we're going to run it from there. So it, whichever clubs do the best are the ones that are going to hopefully do it consistently, and then they we've got a lot of people that are very interested. And uh, and uh, it's going really well. So we're excited. That is incredible. And like I said, I wish you the best with that. And then uh, just sort of speaking of New Jersey, how's uh, everything at the NJRTC going for you and your guys? It's awesome, man. So we're getting ready to go to Poland uh, for a big international competition. Lodzik and Nate Jackson going and uh, these guys are they're training very hard. Nate's out at the training center right now. Um, so he's wrestling with Zahid a lot. He's wrestling with Jaden. They're pretty close, even though they wrestled at Final X. So um, he's going to wrestle Snyderman today. So he's got the best partners in the world, best coaches out there looking after him. So I know he's in good hands. And I'm over here working with Kaladze, getting him ready. And um, we actually have a Polish wrestler. There's a big name of Baranowski who's training at the NJRTC. So he's obviously going to be competing there, too. It'd be good to be uh, linked back up with him. And so, uh, yeah, man, that's what we've been doing. We're training very hard. Um, we're doing so much technique all the time and, uh, we focus on that and yeah, man, I'm excited to compete again. You don't get that many chances on the senior level. So going over to Poland is going to be, uh, we're ready. Think, you know? Um, just yeah. sort of how was the preparation from a coaching perspective for your guys making it to final X like chance and Nate, um, just what was the preparation that went into that and keeping them focused? I know it, might not have went their their way, but what was the preparation like for them? Um, so I don't know if you know this, but Nate's preparation was crazy. Uh, we got thrown upside down. He won the <laughs> yeah, pan I actually had him on the show, and he was <laughs> telling me all about it. I was I was really stunned. My jaw might have been, my mouth might have been opened. Yeah, that. man, mine too. <laughs> for the whole, I don't know what was it, six months we were dealing yeah. with that. Yeah. So he tested positive for steroids, but clearly never took them. Um, Almost half the field uh, of the champions in women, Greco and freestyle tested positive. Um, so we thought like right away, like, oh, that half the field, none of these dudes are cheaters or anything. So we thought it was going to go away. And then we watched it go away one by one. And Nate was the last one. And it was like the week of the open. And we're going, all right, we need an answer. They said, here's your answer. Four year ban. We were like, oh. talk about a heartbreak. And so yeah. um, then we went to the lawyers and the problem is, with this boldenone is the steroid he tested positive for. Uh, not one case had been overturned uh, through the appeal process, not one. So there were so many times where we didn't know if he was going to even be able to wrestle ever again because he would have retired on the spot, um, if they, especially if they just take it away from you for no reason. Um, so the training, although um, we're constantly focused on technique and we used it almost as a distraction, there'd be so many days where we'd be going hard and he'd look at me like, why are we doing this? And I had a really hard time telling him just for the chance. And so, um, so for him to stay as dedicated as he did with not knowing, we found out that he could wrestle the day before last chance. We found out Friday, last chance was Saturday. He <laughs> won that, waited one week, wrestled the world team trials, waited another week, wrestled Jaden. And to be able to take a match from Jaden and still be really ready um, I mean, watch out next year, really watch out because For he's real. making jumps and he's, he's doing that on a, the craziest schedule you could imagine. So when he really gets focused and, and knows he's going to be able to compete and he can really have a set plan, uh, I think he's going to make even bigger jumps. And the dude is the best listener I've ever been around. Um, we kind of started it from, from the beginning. So he knows that I can help him. And I told him from the beginning, I said, when I'm right, I'm right. And when I'm wrong, I'm right. And we're going to be right and wrong together you know we're just going to be all in at it because at this level it's so hard to change things once you change something you're not going to be good enough to beat high level guys um, with that technique so you kind of have to take your lumps and he understands that he's constantly trying new stuff um, sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but along that process he always finds out something that is a new skill for him 
Um, because, you know, I've coached guys like Graf and, and Downey and Graf is five, three, five, four, Nate six, three, like things are different for these guys, but I teach them position. I teach them how to stay athletic and stay powerful. And then they figure out how to do it for themselves. And then they show me things along the way. And so we've just had such a good relationship the whole time. And, um, the preparation was, was kind of like that. Uh, and then for chance too, um, He's new to the NJRTC, but I think he was really missing that piece where somebody really cared about him. And Kendall and I, because we're kind of partnered with NYC RTC, uh, we work really well together. There's no ego. If I got something good to say, I say it. If Kendall's got something good to say, he says it. And he's in the corner with me and, and Nate as well. Um, and so it, it's just been really good. And chance to win a match versus Burroughs is, is so phenomenal. But same thing with Nate beating Jaden. It's phenomenal, but we were, we were really happy with that, but we're also very disappointed because you're so close, you know, of and course. if you beat Jaden, you beat JB, you're kind of expecting to win the world, you know? And so it's uh, very close, but we got a lot of work to do. Winning that third match is a whole different story. So uh, back to the drawing board, but it's an exciting time to be over here on the East coast. For sure. Yeah. Um, Great here in that preparation, of course. Um, and then another thing, uh, just from what Nate told me and just listen to you, it seems like at your RTC, there's a lot of like, sort of like a family, sort of like a college team. Um, yeah. When you took over that job, how did you start implementing that and really get guys to believe, like truly believe in that process that you're laying down? Um, man, I think the answer is to be in it with them. You know, it's, it's kind of, you have to be, genuine you have to be authentic and so uh if you're a guy that loves to watch film then get them interested in watching film if you're a guy that loves to do technique get them interested in the technique if you're a fun guy be fun if you're a very serious guy make sure everybody's on time and organized like work to your skill set and and it worked very well for us and um and it's it there's ups and downs to being that close though nate and i are not that far in age um and we feel like brothers so when we butt heads, it's, it's real, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. but we also, we fight and then we, we get right back together and we know that wrestling's really hard and tempers get heated when you're in there really fighting with each other. And I'm doing the same thing with Kalazic and we actually train together a lot. So it's uh we butt heads there too, but that's what a family does, you know, and, and I'm in there working with them. And so I have, I think a little, I'm young enough to be able to do that. And I don't think I can be in there for that much longer, but I go through all the lifts. I go through all the drills and all the, a lot of the live with them. So by Thursday, Friday, and my body's falling apart, uh, I have a realistic expectation of what I want to get my guys to do. And so um, if, if I'm tired, I know they're tired. And so maybe I pull it back there. So I think like the reason why we're so close is because we're all in it together. And sometimes I feel like I'm an athlete on the team and sometimes I'm the coach. So that that's a line that that uh, gets a little bit blurred sometimes. But uh, I think uh, we're all just trying our best to, to win and uh, we're all in it together. So that's kind of how we stay a family. Yeah. Um, what are just some mm -hmm. insights you've learned from all those great coaches you were around that sort of led you to where you're at now that you sort of implement in your coaching style? And, uh, like I said before, everybody's really genuine. If they're very good at something. They all have different skills and they all have different weaknesses and the best coaches make a team around uh, the things that they need. Uh, Ayers is very, very organized and knows how to run a program. And Dubuque is very driven in different ways. And I'm a great technician. Nate's a great technician. And Dubuque's, and they're all great on the mat too. You know, like the weaknesses, I wouldn't even call them weaknesses. They're just, they have other guys that do different skills a little bit differently. Um, and so delegating those different jobs, Tom Ryan is the best fundraiser and a really good recruiter. And he let Roselli be the technique guy and kind of run the practices. And that's what worked for them in that moment. It's what worked for me as an athlete over there. I actually, when I was a collegiate athlete, I kind of thought Roselli was the coach and I had no idea how amazing Tom was until maybe my junior, senior year. And I started to see it from a different perspective because, you know, I'm in it for just the wrestling. I mm -hmm. asked a wrestling question, it would be to Lou. Uh, but Tom, holy cow, man, he is, he's on another level. And that's why he's the head coach. And I didn't understand that when I was younger. But, uh, yeah, it's so, so important. And I'm seeing it with Ayers. And I'm, um, 
yeah, man, it's uh, just being around these guys and then being around the Titan Mercury people, even though I was doing high school, they do su such different things on such a high level to be able to support you know, the whole entire world team almost <laughs> over at Titan Mercury. And uh, so that's been great to be around. And I have the bosses that I have here are some of the biggest hitters in wrestling with Rich DeVoso and Nova Gratz. And then over at NYC RTC, they have Dave Barry and Andy Barth as Titan Mercury and NYC. Those are the four main people. And Kira Barry is huge on the women's side. So uh, just amazing, amazing people. Very, very successful people to be around. I'm just I, I don't know what I provide, but I'm just trying to listen to everything. <laughs> That's great. Sounds like you're still a real sponge, which some people lose that sponge ability the, the older they get, but sounds like you're just getting better and better at just being a sponge absorbing. Yeah, I, I like to around. think that. You know? <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to listen, trying to learn, but you know, sometimes it's hard uh, to grow, but yeah, everybody can always get better. And I know that I'm not even close to prime yet. That's awesome. Um, which uh, we've talked a lot of coaching already. Um, and I know you still, compete from time to time so i really would love to just sort of hear um just about your uh veteran age level career and what made you be like yeah. hey let's let's get into this and if you have any stories throughout that uh short adventure so far i'd love to hear it yeah so i'm definitely going to do it again it's in bulgaria this year in october and my brother is the reason i got into it he always did the masters nationals in vegas while the open was going on and he would go straight from the pool party into <laughs> competing and then <laughs> wrestling Greco. And I was like, man, this is crazy. And, um, but I respected it. Like, you know, people say like, Oh, it's not that easy. It's not that tough. If you were good, you would win. Um, yeah, well then do it. You do it. You step on the line, you put the singlet on and see how nerve wracking it is. And that you actually have to try. It, it's a, it's a whole different kind of respect for the, you know, the man in the arena, the guy that actually toes the line. And uh, I think people are figuring out that more people are getting excited about it. I think a lot of people saw that I competed at the Veteran Worlds. And, you know, because so many, so many of these club coaches, I go and do a camp and these dudes, they say like, man, if I knew what I knew now, I would definitely be on the world team or I'd be national. I'm like, yeah, right. Step yeah. Out there, <laughs> out there because it is a different different feeling and and whatever man it doesn't matter because competing at any level if it's fair it's exciting and and so and i'm always looking for i'm chasing things you know I, i'm not chasing olympic dream olympic gold anymore but now I'm, i want to be a famous rapper of course check that off i'm done <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> but, uh, but I, I just, yeah i want to i want to compete and uh this is the Next best thing that's available, you know, I tried the U23 Worlds. I got second and third. So I've never broken through and been the world champ until now. And, you know, a lot of people thought it was a joke and laughed at it. But I get that brought up more than anything that I've done. People call me world champ uh, way before they say world team member, you know. And, so, and it, it's people think it's funny, but I, watch, watch it grow watch it grow when I go again. And as soon as I register, as soon as that becomes available, I'm calling out everybody and I'm calling out everybody. Anybody that wants to catch these hands can come get it. Um, <laughs> so I think uh, once they, and I got a bunch of my boys that want to go to, and we're going to go and we're going to compete and it's going to be fun, win or lose. We're going to go have fun. And if we're going to have a reason to travel and to get together and uh, the same thing goes for the, the masters nationals. I think a lot of people went cause like Guido went this year, Uriah Faber went, and uh, neither of those dudes won. Clay uh, went 0 and 2. Favor was second, and they were in some scraps. And those dudes trained. Those dudes really trained. So I think the level already made a big jump at those events. And uh, and you watch in the years to come. I think if I continue to do this and keep growing adult wrestling, uh, I think that it's going to continue to get better and better. And I'm just trying to grow wrestling, man. I'm just trying to do my part and be who I am. And uh, I think people enjoy watching it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, two points. Yeah, people definitely don't realize that. I think people just imagine that it's old people walking out that haven't wrestled in like years. And that's not not true at all. <laughs> I've not seen several all. of those matches. They are still very legit for. Yeah, still very legit. Um, and then you also said just sort of going out there having fun, which led back to your first the second thing you wanted to mention. So it's definitely a great girl in the sport. I know when you started talking about it, on social media, it got way bigger just in that instance with your poll. So that's really, really great. Yeah. And uh, I'm excited to see you continue to do it. 
Um, and yeah, then I also know great. you've done yeah. a little bit of a uh, beach wrestling. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm yeah. just, I'm just curious how that was. Cause that's something I've actually thought, like I recently just got done my uh, D three career last a couple months ago. And I'm like, I think I had a wedding, but there was a beach tournament in like North Carolina. I was like, man, I'm, I might start training. And I'm, I'm going to do this. Do it. Yeah. Do is it, it fun? Bro. How fun it's is it? So, it's so fun. So I actually think beach wrestling is the future. Yeah, I think I hope so. and, uh, it really is. You know, uh, I've heard, I've heard some things about women's beach wrestling being in Olympics very soon. Um, I think, oh, and I think they'll get a ton of spectators. You think about beach volleyball it does way better than indoor volleyball for mm-hmm. obvious reasons. But, um, but I think this, the skill set or the rules are much, much better. Um, they're very simple. And I think wrestling, that's one of our biggest downfalls. If you're not a diehard fan, you see a scramble, uh, even three experienced wrestlers, experts might have three different answers on what the score was. And that's just hard to follow. You follow basketball, you put the ball in a hoop, you score, you put the puck in the net, you score. Um, in wrestling, it's, it's so confusing, but in beach wrestling, a takedown one, a push out one, you hit a knee one point. If you feel, Keep the back. Um, even if you lateral drop and you've got to roll off your back, it's going to be one. So you got to flat back them and kind of hold them there as if you were going to get near fall. It's three, match over. And so it's very simple. Uh, it's easy to understand. It's one three minute period. There's no breaks, it's all action. Um, and a three minute period, you try that in the sand, it's going to feel a little longer <laughs> if you've never <laughs> been in the sand wrestling. Right uh, I, cause I, I had only trained on the mat. I, I was training the rules and trying to figure it out. But, uh, when I first stepped out there, I knew I was in for a little bit of, of a rude awakening. Um, and I actually thought it was going to be more like a veteran event. Uh, and I looked at the bracket and three of the guys had beaten Logan Stieber in my bracket that <laughs> I, uh, just like randomly signed up for. I was like, Oh no, this is not good. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And so, uh, it was a real scrap and I would definitely, definitely do it again. I'm just trying to figure out the right time because I train so much with my guys. Mm-hmm. I always want to compete at the freestyle events, but I can't coach and compete at the same time. So, so these are the outlets that are available to me. And I think, uh, I think I could be right in to medal or win the worlds in, in beach wrestling. So veterans and beach, if anybody wants to sponsor me, Come on, man, because I <laughs> would love, love to be back out there for another shot at that. For sure. Yeah, no, it just seems so fun. And um, you were the first at- USA athlete I saw really compete at because I've obviously heard about it beforehand. And, yeah, it just looks like a lot of fun for sure. Um, Think about the moms. Think about all the moms in the, the wrestling gyms all the time. <laughs> if they could be a pina colada, <laughs> sit on the beach. <laughs> Wouldn't that be better? That would, you sold me a while ago, but for everyone who's going to listen, there you go. You'll sell them on that one. <laughs> All the moms, for sure. I know, that's where I'd rather be. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Um, and yeah, you're outside too on the beach. I mean, that's that's the thing that I'm like. It's like outside on the beach. Why why a hot wrestling room or gym when you could be in a right. hot, hot beach instead? Um, for and, sure. and for everybody that is still competing freestyle and Greco, when I started training beach wrestling, I got a lot better. Be- at at freestyle Seems because so positional beach yeah and i have to you can't really hit your knee uh, on your attack so it's a little bit more upper body but you can still grab legs so uh it's, it's just it putting me in a different situation more often and i kind of had to adapt and once i did i kept those skills when i just started going back to train freestyle and um it, i think it, it helped me grow so all you freestyle guys that don't like greco wrestle greco don't like Greco, wrestle beach wrestling. Just try new things all the time. Uh, if you've never wrestled upper body and you only do folk style, get up there. And once you play with it for enough time, uh, you'll learn something good about yourself and uh, you'll grow much faster that way. Absolutely. Um, the way I just kind of look at the different styles of wrestling is if you can learn at least one one new thing that will help you in your preferred style, it's probably worth it, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and we talked a lot about the different rules and all the styles throughout this. Um, I know when you were competing uh, really competitively, uh, wrestling used to be the period based and then it transitioned to what it what it's more like now with the rule set. What was what was that like uh, when you were competing one and then switching over to the other? Um, just the uh, transition. So these are the best rules. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, I can I can agree rules. with you on that. 
uh, the clinch, uh, we almost lost wrestling. <laughs> we yeah, had for real. eliminated from the Olympics and then they voted to put it back in. It was gone for a minute. I remember sitting, we were overseas somewhere. I was sitting with Travell and, and Burroughs and we were watching on somebody's phone the decision and wrestling came back. But that's how I think poor those rules were. If you were significantly worse than somebody and you knew it, you could stall and try and go clinch and then have a decent chance. The percentage would go way up that you could win. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, but same kind of thing as I learned some new skills from that. If you were up one Oh, it was over. I, I was shutting it down. Yeah. And, uh, and I got very good at being offensive in the last 30 and defensive in the last 30 and uh, learned some really good skills in that. But like, if I, there was no incentive to be up five Oh, because second period at zero, zero again. Uh, so uh, it was really bad for the action in the sport. Um, the clinch made the worst wrestler win a decent amount of time. Um, clinch in general just kind of sucked. <laughs> it was like a coin flip. Uh, I, I didn't make the Olympic team. I lost two clinches in that match with Coleman. I was on the team in 2011 and 2013. Um, and so it's like, I feel like that's where my prime kind of was. And, um, you know, that's just, and it, I don't think Coleman was stalling or anything or trying to, to, you know, take a cheap one on me, but it's just kind of the reality of what the rules were back then. And, uh, and it's like matches like that. I, I walked off the mat and I didn't even feel like I lost. I'm like, wait, it's over. I got to wait four years for another chance at this. And so I've always hated the clinch. Um, I, I lost a bunch of clinches leading up my first like six or seven. I lost the flip every single time. So I knew I never wanted to go there. Um, and so it helped me be a little bit more offensive. But I mean, you can take positives from it, but those rules God, suck. But Reese, we, we've kind of just talked about all levels of your career. Uh, one thing I love to ask people is just sort of uh, what's been one of your favorite matches of just all time. It could be back in high school. It could be uh, during yeah. your senior level career or heck be beach wrestling, man. It really yeah. doesn't matter. I'll give, you, I'll give you a little bit of each. So high Perfect. school, I wrestled, I wrestled uh, Angel Escobedo. He beat me. Uh, so that was not my favorite. I actually uh, saw that when I was researching. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me, and then I beat Andrew Howe in the state finals. It's yep. crazy. So, you're in the yeah. same way. So that's, that uh, is wild. that's kind of wild. <laughs> um, Collegiate, I beat Jason Ness in the semifinals with zero takedowns. I uh, I rode him out for a period, and that's not how I wrestle. So that was like <laughs> a different, different way for me to get things done. Um, and then the time when I threw Lou Rigorello, that was pretty awesome. It was kind of a turning point in my career where I, I thought I was good, and then at, after that point I knew I was really good, and uh, I had a lot more confidence going into the rest of the season. Um, on the senior level – uh, some of my matches versus Iran, uh, I lost all of them against this dude, Esmeel Porjour. Uh, but I learned that I wasn't out of shape. I was getting beat positionally. And it's something that stuck with me. It's something that I talk about all the time. Are you winning the energy battles? If I'm fighting you forward, you're fighting me sideways. I could do that for a lot longer. If I'm inside and um, in underhooks, I could do that for a lot longer. And so we figure that out. And I think it's something that we still talk about every single day uh, because of those matches. And so although they were not my favorite while they were happening, they taught me the most. Um, beach wrestling, all those matches, awesome. Uh, veteran, <laughs> worlds, <laughs> veteran worlds, wrestling my brother in the world finals is like, it's such a crazy dream come true. Uh, we've been wrestling for 30 years from living rooms all the way to the world stage is uh, one of the coolest things that people like to talk about. And I, I hold really close to my heart. So there you go, man. That's a quick rundown of my favorites. I love it. Uh, great insight, especially the uh, Iran one. Um, I might take, I took a lot away from that too, from you just telling me that it's a yeah yeah couple. watch him just whoop my ass man <laughs> <laughs> you do learn the best from a loss i guess yeah right and i was winning 5-0 at the world's when the tech was seven so i was really and it's like the perfect recipe for getting really tired i was yeah. really trying to get seven and then you get close and then boom it's five two like uh oh and yeah. so I had some really good scraps with him i was beating him seven oh once uh when the tech was ten and he just kept pushing, kept grinding, knew what his game plan was and watched me fall apart. And so uh, and I don't think I learned like how to hand fight or how to hold position until those matches. And they were late in my career. So um, I didn't really understand some of that stuff until I was really done competing. So I'm glad that I get to pass it down to my my guys, though. For sure. Awesome. But. 
Reese Humphrey, I really, really appreciate the time, man. This was awesome. Um, we do. It was a dream come true. One of my favorite wrestlers for sure. So that's awesome. Exciting, man. I appreciate man. you having me on. Yeah, no problem, man. Best of luck over Poland, you said, right? Yes, sir. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Best of luck to, to you and your athletes for sure.